uh, Steinmetz to talk about weathering with Pan Pastel and some other subjects. Pete, I'm sorry this is running a little late tonight, but thanks so much for being here and doing this. Oh, that's all right. I'm uh, during this whole thing, I was going to weather this particular car. And I started looking at it and I was fiddling with it a little bit and I thought, you know, this is gonna be really hard to see. So for contrasting purposes, I grabbed this particular car because this will be much easier to see what I'm doing. Um, let me fire up my lights and we'll get rolling here. Now, uh, one of the things that I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna weather the whole car, but I'm gonna show you a lot of techniques that you guys can use for weathering your own cars. Um, weathering is, is really interesting. A lot of people, there's so many different ways to do it. No way is, is right all the time and no way is wrong all the time. Um, I see a lot of guys that will take this particular car and they wanna fade it so they get white craft paint out and they start filling with white craft paint, which to me is, you know, it works, but it's a lot of work. Um, I like to do this stuff that, that uh, may, comes out with a good result, but is fairly easy to do. And one of the things that I found that works really well is pan pastels. Uh, pan pastels are, are interesting. They are, um, they come in many different colors. They're easy to use. They blend well. You can blend them on the side of your car. Uh, if you don't can erase them and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So the first thing that I do with cars is I put a flat on them and flat ish. I set them up like this. And then I just take a spray wherever it went. I prefer to use the uh, Tamiya. This is called TS80 clear flat. Uh, I do not use Dullcoat. I haven't used Dullcoat in years. Uh, I don't like it. it. It actually has a tendency to turn yellow over, over time. Uh, but the thing I don't like the most is the spray nozzle on the can. Uh, it kind of comes out in globs where this Tamiya comes out in a fine mist. And I just give it a little squirt on the side, squirt on the bottom, get the trucks. <clears throat> I usually do it outside to walk around. When I am done with one side, I take and I turn it over like this, and then I do the top, and then I do the sides again, and I spray down. So that gets it all. And you don't need to uh, put on a lot. You just need to uh, you just need a little bit. And all we're doing is trying to get uh, get some tooth for the pan pastels to stick. If you try to do it, uh, pan pastels without putting anything on there, they're going to be very slippery and they don't stick as well. Uh, if you put the del, uh, the uh, flat finish on and uh, if you have problems, you can just take it right off. You can blend, it sticks well. And the other thing that I don't do, that a lot of people do, I don't seal it at the end. Um, I handle my cars kind of like this and I've really never had any problems with the, with the stuff coming off. Now, uh, Pan Pastels is what I use as a base. And this particular car, um, I've got some funny colors that I bought. I kind of went uh, OCD on Pan Pastels and I bought colors that I may and never in a billion years use. I've got this nice red here. <laughs> I haven't used it yet. I just opened it uh, just to see what it actually looked like. It doesn't really fit anything that I've got. Maybe a GM and O car or something like that, but I still have it just in case. Um, I bought this particular green color, which is kind of funny looking, and I bought it to do BN, uh, BN green cars to do a fading on it. It worked really well. Color is called uh, chromium oxide green shade. Um, it works great. Now we're going to try it on a much lighter car. This is the uh, New York Central System, Jade Green. This is an Accurail kit, so it's kind of a uh, shake the box a little bit, but turn, they turn out pretty well. So to do this, start from the top, and you don't need to be real precise on this. 
So it's, it's both, if you can see this, it's both fading it a little bit and it's also giving a little bit of dirt, uh, dirt color to it. Now to fade the lettering very, very lightly. You don't have to put much pressure on this. You're just dragging this across. And you ask, what are these little doodads? And I can answer that very quickly. These are eyeshadow applicators. They come from Target. They cost less than $2 for 24 of them. Uh, I have a tendency to use them till they fall apart because like Jeff, I'm a cheap guy and uh, I don't wanna be buying new ones and doing it all the time. For this particular color, I'm using a new one because, uh, but I will use this till it falls apart. Anybody have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to interject because this is interactive. So I'm fading the lettering just a little bit, going down here. Now we start at the top and drag it down because that's the way the, the uh, weathering patterns will go from top to bottom, except when we get into what splatters up. That's yes. a, a question. If you go okay. too far and you find yourself going over like the white uh, reporting marks or the lettering yep. that you might need for an operation. Yeah, well, you mean like this? Exactly or that, like... you went too far. What do you do yeah. now? Oh, that's a great question. I have a nice gummed eraser that I use. Uh, they cost about a dollar a piece. This is a uh, Faber-Castile gummed eraser. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or any of the uh, Michaels, any of the art supply stores. I went too far. What am I going to do? I'm just going to do that. Oh, that's Voila. cheating. I love it. Yeah, it works great. You know, I've had, and uh, that way, you know, I encourage people to do this and just experiment, just try it out. Uh, because the thing, the pen pastels are so forgiving. If you make a mistake or get the wrong color or, uh, you just don't like it, just erase it, start over. No, I didn't, I purposely didn't erase the whole thing. It's still a little bit on there, but um, so I could then go back over it just like this because during op sessions, you definitely do not want to have your reporting marks uh, covered up. That will make people nuts unless you want to put some car out there that has the reporting marks and make it be a, 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 uh, a car that they absolutely have to touch and they can't find it, which is always fun. Anyway, so I go along and I, I do this and, and uh, dragging it down. But the bottom's gonna look different because all the stuff kind of fly up from the track and the, the wet and the grime and the slime and all of that. So there's a number of things we can do there. We can come along like this with a different color. This is a little brownish. And I'm not sure I really like that. So I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of dark. Whoa, that's a little too much. So I'm gonna go back to the brown. And I'm just gonna blend it in. So what I do with this, I got one color on one side, one color on another side, and then I could use the edges to either blend them or I can add another color to it. I, uh, I first got into Pan Pastels. Uh, Tony Custer had an article in Model Railroader years ago, and he talked about weathering cars quickly, like, you know, a whole bunch of cars in an hour. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. But what if I spent a little extra time and, and did some other stuff to it? And uh, I did. I spent some extra time I, and, and I got some photos, used a lot of photos um, and just went over stuff. Now, another thing that I really like to use, and this is a whole nother clinic. This is the uh, AK Interactive 
uh, weathering pencils. They come in either, you can either buy them in sets of uh, three to five, or you can buy the full box, which is 37 colors. They are a bit expensive. Uh, I used uh, I used to use the uh, Carbothello and Prismacolor pencils, which are just basically art pencils, and they worked okay. They were fine. You definitely needed to have, uh, uh, they didn't work well on slippery surfaces, so you needed to have a flat finish. But then I found these guys, and uh, I couldn't find them in the U.S. at all, and I had my friend Martin Wahlberg uh, in the Netherlands get me a set because I was going to be over there. I happened to be there actually when this whole pandemic uh, shutdown started. But anyway, I, uh, I, actually, I also weathered a car uh, on an Air New Zealand flight from London to LA uh, on a tray table. I actually drew a crowd to people wondering what I was doing. The light was absolutely the best light ever. You know, 30, I think we were 36,000 feet, man, that was just awesome. I control the light with the, uh, with the, the shade. But anyway, so I got these guys and I like them a lot. Um, they're definitely worth a little extra money. Um, they very subtly, this is a, a one called uh, medium rust. And I'm just running it down the rivet lines because that's where rust would uh, accumulate. Okay, I hope you guys can see this, it's a little Do it on the trucks, do it on the springs of the trucks, end of the journal box, just very subtle stuff. I'm kind of a less is more guy when it comes to weathering. I could do the, uh, I could do the, uh, darn, my phone keeps going off, eh, kids. So I can do the rust bucket cars, but I, you know, how many rust bucket cars do you see out there? You know, you see what percentage of rust bucket versus uh, regular cars. And I'm more of a transition modeler, so I don't really get into the, uh, the graffiti that much. Um, I did years ago when I first started doing this and thought I was uh, uh, hot at this, I, I put some cars out. Uh, these are N scale cars and I, I weathered them and I put them on eBay. And I put them on for like 20 bucks, which meant I was getting about 10 cents an hour for actually doing these things. But uh, nobody bought them, nothing, like crickets. So what did I do? I uh, went back and I got some uh, graffiti decals and I put them on there and every one of them sold. Just using just old graffiti decals. So I do the rust. A little bit of rust here, a little bit of rust there. The neat thing about this is it's, it's you know, you want to be accurate, but you don't have to be too awful precise. Um, I recommend working with, uh, with photographs. There's so many photographs online and you don't need to find the car that, um, ex that's an exact match. If you do, nice, but you just need to find something similar. And uh, I find them all the time. I mean, you know, so I can find it, an old funky green boxcar. Uh, I can find boxcar red in pretty much anything that I want. So we're gonna kind of finish up this side a little bit. And we're gonna to move to the bottom of the car. And I like doing the bottoms, bottoms are fun. So I just put this on here and, I do, and I'm not really, I'm just kind of slopping it on for right now. How do you deal with the ladder rungs? That's a great question. Man, these questions are just awesome tonight. I'm gonna to show you that in just a minute because this guy does not fit in there. Not real well anyway. And I'm kind of anal. I want it to be, I want it to look good. You know, I don't want it to be half bright and half not bright. So what I have, I have something called uh, color shapers. 
This is a little rubber tipped uh, doohickey. And I am gonna go in there and I'm gonna get right in here like this with my color shaper. And then I'm gonna go along here Mixing the colors as I go. Now you guys are gonna say, well, where do you get these? I will show you in a moment. They come in different, uh, different uh, tip shapes. This is, it, this is hard to see, but uh, the tip shape is kind of like that. It's not straight up and down. is what they are. They're color shapers. And I guess that's kind of showing up. It's C-O-L-O-U-R shaper. Um, they, I got these on Amazon. Uh, they're a bit expensive. It's about $20 for a set of about five, but they come in different. Uh, all of the tips are different. Uh, you want to make sure you get firm size zero. If you do an HO scale or, or O and 30 or N firm size zero. They have a soft and this, you don't want the soft because it just doesn't work as well. Uh, I bought a couple soft ones in there. No good. The firms are where you want to go. Um, so these are pretty fun. They're very versatile. You can get right in here and, and do what you need to do with them. Um, there's another little tool that I like to use. And it looks like just a plain old brush, but this is called a scrubber. And what make and you can make these things. Take a take a brush that's got fairly firm bristles and just cut it down. You want to cut it down to oh maybe half an inch. And what you do with this is you can get in here and you just scrub the stuff on. And it works really well, much much better than a, than an average brush because it's a, it's much harder. So, and you can also use it, um, it, it'll get into the cracks and crevices real nicely too. So now I've slopped it on, but I haven't pushed down, so it's really not on there very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it a little bit with this, and I'm going to not only blend it, but I'm going to get it to stick. Now, as you can see, a little bit of it disappears, and that's quite all right. See how this is just kind of blending? These are two colors are blending together, and you can blend as many colors as you want in here. And we get in there with some grays. And I am going to do a different gray, a little bit lighter. But I'm not going to change the, uh, the tip. I'm just going to put this over the top of it a little bit. So right here, you can see this, we've got three different colors on there, all nicely blended together. And you can just keep going on it if you want, or you can stop there. And, and that's another nice thing about Pan Pastels. If you want to just uh, you know, put some grays and some browns in and a boxcar red, you're good to go. Your car will be weathered. If you want to sit down and spend a lot of time on it, uh, you can do that too. I like to fiddle with it. Zoom meetings are great for weathering cars, incidentally you could be looking down at stuff and, and uh, not, you know, kind of listening to what's going on, but not really paying a huge amount of attention. And pretty soon at the end of the meeting, you got a weathered car. I shouldn't say that because I do that there. I actually do that a lot. But uh, another little thing that I like to do is I like to use these little brushes. Um, these are just the little wonder brushes. I use them for uh, paint. I use them for uh, washes. 
Another thing that I like a lot is I like the Tamaya panel line accent colors. Uh, they come in black, a couple shades of brown, a couple shades of gray. These are pretty cool. Um, they are more of a wash than a paint. And I'm going to show you this here real quick. So I'm going to pick out a nice spot here. We're going to do some of this on this, uh, this truck. And then we'll run a little bit But see, that's a little bit too much. So what do I do? I get my Viva paper towel because they are the most absorbent. I can just dab it a little bit. So I get just a little bit off of there, real subtle. Then I can go back over it with something else, such as our, uh, our green. It just kind of blends it in. I use the panel line accent colors a lot also on the roofs. Um, another neat place to do them. So it kind of colors it, but it just gives it some texture. And you just want it to be random. You don't want it to necessarily be uh, all real dark or all real light. Random is good. To me, it makes a lot of good products that can be used in weathering. And they're very easy to find. Uh, with the lack of train shops around, there's a lot of places that do model kits. And uh, they'll have a, as Jeff said, they have that clear uh, for doing your LED, for coloring your LEDs. They have all kinds of cool stuff. Um, wheels, how about wheels? One of the things that I like about doing wheels, I like to use this Floquel enamel paint marker. I don't think you can actually get these anymore, but there's a number of different companies that make um, uh, enamel paint markers. So when I do a wheel, I'll just stick that little bad boy up in the air. I go around like this. And I do them both. And I'm not going to do it right this second because it's a little involved, but uh, I also, you can take pigments like a Bragdon or an AK interactive pigment, and you can just slop it on there while it's wet and it'll stick. And it gives a little texture and it doesn't come off. Uh, pretty cool way to do things. So I'm going to go back over the uh, springs with one of my AK pencils. I also have another, I have a clinic on using these AK pencils, but that's a completely different clinic. <clears throat> Questions so far? Yeah, okay. Pete, Pete, yes. uh, this is Greg Cassidy. I have a question. Since you mentioned sure. uh, artist pigments, um, I've been using them quite a bit for uh, weathering on structures and buildings and yeah. stuff. Uh, but some of my friends are using pastels, the pan pastels. Yep. How do you compare them? Are they somewhat interchangeable? Or if they're different, how are they different? Well, the, because you're using them on wood, right? Yes. Okay. So on wood, they absorb a lot quicker than they do on plastic, even uh, plastic that's been uh, uh, flat finished. So you got to be a little careful because they're not as forgiving but you still could uh, mix them. Um, you know, guys use uh, 
a lot of guys use pan pastels on structures and I've done it and it works really great. Uh, I've also used the pigments on structures. Um, I kind of like the pan pastels better because they blend better. I think that the pigments, um, I, I mean, the pig, when I, so when I say pigments, guys think that, uh, a lot of guys call them chalks and they're not, they're pigments. These are chalks, soft pastels, where you shave them off and you make a powder out of them and you spend all day weathering them. Yeah, those are any... different. I tend to get a lot of the Gambon artist pigments. They come I... in a wide range of colors. Well, I see the guys that use these uh, these soft chalks and they spend an awful lot of time getting it just right. Then they have to seal it, it disappears. And then they have to go back over it. Da -da 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 -da. To me, that's kind of uh, not, Good. I use a lot of uh, pigments from both ammo and AK, and these are similar to the Bragdon and their properties, except there's a lot more colors available, uh, but they all have a, an adhesive property to them, so they stick to stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, back to your question, um, you know, it's just doing it on wood is different. So you can also mix, uh, people mix both the pan pastels and the pigments with uh, alcohol to put on to make kind of a little uh, stain. Um, you can do that. I, I mean, I've done it before too. So I mean, did, did I answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I, I may get some of the pastels to play with them. Uh, I've been able to do a, a lot of effects with the pigments or with the uh, artist pigments Sure. Uh, I'd suggest you take a look at, at Blick Artist Supply and see if they have some of the colors you like for a, a lot cheaper. Cheaper than, you mean as far as the pigments go or? Yes, uh, you can get uh, large containers for between seven and $16, depending on the yeah. color. I just got a box from Blick the other day. And- Yeah, nice stuff. <laughs> they do. It's, it's unfortunate that their stores are really random as far as their selection goes. Uh, I first started buying the pan pastels from Blick because I'm kind of a touchy feely guy, but the only store that had them in Southern California was in West Los Angeles. Luckily, my daughter was attending UCLA, so it was only about 10 minutes away, but uh, that's how I kind of went in there and bought all these weird colors that I may never use. Um, one of the things I got from Blick here are these uh, Molotov markers. Now they come and you can buy them in, uh, in hobby shops that have actual paint in them. I found them, I could buy them empty and add my own paint, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be using these to, uh, to color rail that's already down, track and rail, uh, but they're pretty cool. Are they something like Copic markers? They, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they uh -huh. are, but except this doesn't have anything in it. You, so okay. you add your own, which I like a lot because I've got uh, colors that I'm going to add my own to. This, this yeah, I've seen, out. I've seen that Copic offers refills, but I've never run out of any of mine yet. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's the thing. I ended up, I bought one of these at a, at a hobby shop and I liked it. So I went online to find Blick and I bought a whole bunch more and I bought some refills. But they're pretty cool. They've got a little bead in them, so it'll mix your paint. <coughs> I'm going to have to figure out the proper uh, consistency of paint. So, um, I, I don't use the craft paint too much, but I may on this particular job. But I'm, uh, you know, craft paint sometimes is a little difficult to, to work with. Anyway, uh, let's see. So, a lot of times what I will do when I get uh, done or somewhere in there is I will just go like this and go over it. What this does, it just knocks off the excess. And this is just a very, very cheap, like dollar brush. Oh, it's a Pactor brush, huh? Not very well made, but it ser serves the purpose. Um, as far as brushes go, which is also another clinic. I'm a, I kind of got into it. I, I had Grumbacher brushes when I was a kid and the darn things lasted, oh, 50 years, and except for 
the lacquer on the handle started coming off the brush were still fine. So I figured I needed to replace them. And uh, Red Sable was not the top of the line. The Grumbachers were not considered top of the line anymore. I found the Kalinsky Sable. Uh, Kalinsky comes from a particular wolf uh, breed, which is native to the Kamchatka Peninsula. And I've heard a couple of things. Do they have to kill the wolf to get the tail to do these? These are all handmade. I heard yes and no. Uh, for a while, US Customs was thinking yes. So they said, you can't import these things. Then they realized that the, the, uh, the, it was a weasel. The weasel was not endangered. So they let him go again. Uh, these brushes are a little bit more expensive than some of the cheapies that you would buy, but uh, they will last forever and they hold their shape. They're good things. This is a particular brush is a flat brush. Um, I mean, you can get brushes in all different kinds of uh, shapes, flats, rounds. This is one that I've had since I was a kid and it's actually a Floquel Sable flat brush. Um, it's come through okay. You can see here the, uh, uh, it's spread out a little bit, but this also is about 50 years old where this is not. Um, Anyway, I have a brush clinic that I'm going to be doing here uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, another thing that I found that's pretty cool are, are uh, I these brushes are for, for uh, makeup, eye makeup, and they're a little stiff, but they're great for doing, uh, let me find, uh, let's see, little rust marks. Especially this one that is very stiff. So you could do some rust on there. You can go back over it, fiddle with it a little bit more. You get a better rust color. Hope you guys can see that this is just so subtle. Would you repeat again what that brush is that you're using? This one, this is a little, um, I bought these on Amazon. They're, I got this for like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Um, they are called uh, C-O-S-H-I-N-E, Co-Shine, 100 piece, two style, uh, eyeliner, lip liner brushes. And I found out this from some military modeler. I, I hope you guys hang out with military modelers. They can teach us a lot. Right after they get done laughing at us because they think we're primitive. Thanks. Yeah. Um, as I say, in, in that one, there's another one with a this one has a longer bristles. It's not quite as stiff. It still works pretty well. So I like the way that, so I'm gonna use my scrubber and I'm gonna scrub this down just a wee bit. I'm just pushing it in. And then I go back over it see how much actually stuck and not bad. So all of these tools are, you know, they're all little things that I found just kind of weathering around or hanging out with military guys. Um, they have a lot of tools. They have a lot of different um, techniques that they use. Uh, one of the things that they don't have to do is they don't have to make it move. So they can come, come and do something like this and then they let it dry for a day and then they come back and then they do something like this and then they let it dry for a day and they come back. Um, we need to kind of kick it along a little bit because we got to get our stuff to not only look good, but move. Here's something else that I, that I wanted to show you guys. Um, these, if you can see this, this is really good texture. This is, these are like oil paints. And 
oil paints, if you've ever tried to use them, are they're, they work good, but they're really a pain in the ass because it takes them forever to dry unless you put a hair dryer on them. Um, but they, uh, they work pretty well. And if you use them in conjunction with other weathering uh, media, then come on out of there, head boy. There we go. So this is called, if you can see this and you probably can't, This is the 502 Ableting, comes from uh, ammo, and it's, it's just basically oil paint. Squeeze a little bit out. That little dab there will probably take six months to dry. But the, the neat thing about them is, so I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna move it around a little bit spread it out. So you can see it's gooey, it's thick. Mineral spirits is the thinner for this stuff too. But it gives a nice texture. Now, normally you wouldn't want it to be that deep in texture, you want to spread it out. Um, but then you can use other stuff like this. This is called crusted rust deposits. This is a, uh, from AK uh, Interactive, Arm AFV Armored Fighting Vehicle Series weathering set. And so I tried to find these in the US. I heard about them and I tried to find them. I could find places that had two or three colors but I couldn't find anybody that had all three. And I found some guys on eBay that wanted like five bucks to the bottle and six bucks to ship it, which totally rubs me the wrong way. Um, so what I did is I went on the AK website in Spain and I just ordered it there. They had everything I needed. I got some extra paint from them. Um, I figured the shipping was gonna be brutal. It was uh, 15 euro to ship it. I ordered it on Saturday and I had it on Thursday. Came DHL. I highly recommend their site. When this stuff sets up, which it will not have a chance to do tonight, uh, it, will, it, it it's actually crusty, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna just dip into this guy a little bit. But I'm going to get it over here. So I'm just kind of blending this in. And it blends really nice. It works well. I like it a lot. Um, I like textured stuff. Like on the weathering, I like to have it have a little texture to it. And this stuff works very nicely. Crusted rust deposits. And it comes in a light rust, a medium rust, and a dark rust. You'll be seeing more of this stuff um, as more places start to handle the AK and the ammo lines. I have another one and I set it somewhere. I guess I did. I've, uh, they make uh, eight, both AK and ammo make sets depending on what you want to do. Uh, some of the sets have nothing to do with us. They just the colors are not right for what we're doing, but uh, some of them are just right on the money. So we like that a lot. How are we doing? Questions? If crusted rust takes forever to dry, how do you use it? The crusted rust doesn't, the, the oil does. The crusted rust dries the same as all of the other uh, acrylic paints and enamel paints. 
And how do it's you just, apply, how do you apply crusted rust to a rail car, and where do you do it? Well, it depends on where you want the rust. I mean, the rust spot to be, for instance. Do this light rust and I'll show you. A lot of cars have uh, just spots on them. I mean, big spots, like where they, maybe there was a patch job and they didn't uh, prime it right and that whole patch job just rusts. Would you use it on trucks? You could use it on trucks for sure. I'm purposely putting this on a little heavy just so you can see it. But if you had, say, a spot on the side of the car, it was patched. You wanted the, some spots on the roof. Now this would be a first go at this. I would I would definitely go back over it. Let's remember, rust is random, as are a lot of the weathering colors. They're just they're. Uh, Okay, so we've got this, these two colors here on top. But when I would get done with this, I would go back over it. After I find a balanced car, I would go back over it with some other stuff to blend it in better. Okay, because right now it looks a little funky. But I have to wait to, to let it dry a bit. Also, don't be afraid to have it come down the side because it does come down like this. As you can see, the, uh, the panel line wash is, is, uh, is dried, a little bit darker on here, a little bit not so much in the middle. So I go back over it just to kind of even it out. But then once again, this is not the final, uh, this is not final. I'll go over this with some other stuff. That's the one really cool thing about, the, about doing weathering is you just keep going over stuff until you get the texture and the feel that you like. Okay, so that's starting to dry there a little bit and we'll go over it with uh, something else. Okay, so that's this is the straight oil. As you can see, hopefully, it just blends it in. So you've got a, you've got the dark over the top of the of the uh, of the rust. And if I wanted to do a little bit here, I could do the same thing. So you got rust. You're almost reversing it. It's almost like the chipping effect. So you want the rust to show through. So you put the rust on first. Then you put something on top, and then you chip it off, and then the rust comes through. Got it? Questions, comments? How long does it take you normally to uh, to weather a freight car? Depends on how long the Zoom meeting is. <laughs> no, uh, 
I could spend maybe an hour on one, or I could spend a really long time on one. I've got one that sits on my other workbench that I primarily do my Zoom meetings when I'm not presenting on. I've worked on that car. I probably it's probably got 10 hours into it. It's a Proto 2000 gone mm -hmm. with uh, wood flooring. And I just keep dabbing at it and fussing with it and going over it and all of that. And it looks pretty good. It's ready to go on the railroad for sure. Um, <clears throat> I have another clinic I do on, on weathering trucks. Uh, I just touched on a couple of things on doing trucks here tonight, but uh, both painting them and, and weathering them and making them look decent. Um, and it's it's not hard. It's a, it, I use an airbrush for that. Um, I seldom actually use an airbrush because I like the pan pastels and the, the control that I get with it. But there are certain things that you just need to spray. And uh, I think trucks are, are good. I, I've got a whole set of, uh, of Santa Fe hopper cars, Accurail. I think I've got about 20 of them. And I just took all the trucks and put them in a bag and I haven't done anything with them yet. But I'm gonna be uh, getting into a truck painting frenzy outside here pretty soon. <laughs> and I put I stick them on a little uh, barbecue skewer and just spray them that way. Uh, yeah. I don't worry too much about the wheels. Um, getting paint on the wheels because I will clean those off right away with alcohol when I'm done. So anyway, um, I'm getting to the end of my, uh, my presentation here. So if anybody has any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to share them. Kate, what is the first color when you approach weathering a, a, a freight car? What's the first color that you, you're interested in applying? Depends on what the color of the car is. Like for this one, uh, I would do um, burnt sienna shade. And all I'm doing really is trying to fade the car a little bit so it's not so uniform, uh, but it just depends on the car color. Um, and then I, would, then I would lighten it up a little bit. I would put some rust on it. Uh, I would put some panel line wash on just to, to highlight the uh, uh, between the doors here, for instance. Um, I do the wheels because these wheels are bright and shiny. Intermountain wheels. Mm. So it just depends on the color of the car. I mean, it's so many boxcar reds. Um, if I were to start with pan pastels and I didn't have any, there are three sets available that you can get that you save a couple bucks on. Uh, one of them is a weathering like rust and browns. There's another weathering that has grays. And then there's another scenery color that has a lot of bright colors to it. But uh, if you got both the, uh, the gray set and the brown set, you would be, uh, you'd be set. And then you could just add individual colors as you felt the need. Gotcha, thank you. That's recommend for, for uh, people just starting out and, and being interested. And you can buy those on Amazon. Uh, you could buy them. Some shops have them. Some other places have them. Hey, Pete, a uh, question for you from uh, YouTube from Barb. Do you uh, rust the underside of the boxcar or underneath it? Not usually because you don't see it. These are runners. If I was doing a, a contest model, I certainly would, but, but these are mostly just runners. But not, now I will get to like for instance, if you can see like the break, I'll, I'll weather the you know the the stuff that sticks down for sure. And I don't pay too much attention to the uh, couplers. Uh, I do weather them, and I make sure that they still actually function, which usually just takes a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean it's uh, it's fun. I, I when I started doing this, I was at an N scale club and. And I, I weathered some cars and I was over there last year and I saw a couple of the early cars I weathered. I went, man, those things suck. That's awful. And uh, I, I offered to go back and take them and make them look decent. And they said, no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Just don't touch any more of our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's pretty fun. We've got guys, I'm, I'm in an HO club here in Oceanside, California. And we've got guys that they wouldn't even think of making their cars dirty. They want everything to be pristine, and we've got guys that they only want to run rust buckets. So 
uh, you know, matter of personal preference. I like mine kind of in between. I have a few rust buckets, but I mostly have subtle cars that, that look like they were transition era type of things. Yeah, Clark, rust or bust, there you go. <laughs> I, I, have for you. I have a friend uh, in Texas who uh, uh, has a clinic called, if it ain't dirty, it ain't, it ain't done. And he <laughs> takes his nice cars and he makes them dirty. He does a very good job on it. Uh, one thing, and, Pete, I was, yes. uh, Clark, uh, Pete, uh, one thing I was going to say, usually on either red cars like CP, Pac-Man, or uh, green, bright green cars, nope. uh, maybe not so much that PC car, but like uh, uh, sort of that warehouser green type of Yeah, car. right. Or BM uh, or something. Yeah, one of my uh, good buddies who's fantastic at weathering, uh, Ralph Ranzetti, um, he, he always suggested to me that you fade the car with uh, the, in, in red, you're going to use green, and in green, you're going to use red. And the reason is that's the opposite of the color wheel scale. Right, right, yes. And uh, I just wondered if you ever have done that or- you... I haven't done it, but I do have the color wheel. Um, Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. And I use it. And, and I, Ralph is a really, really good modeler and good weathering guy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to talk him to coming into onto one of our meets and showing us some stuff because he does things a little different than a lot of people do. Yes, That's he does. He has a, um, not to put in the plug, but uh, when I hosted uh, for uh, uh, MRH TV there, the, um, we did a segment on weathering and I was just fascinated by how he, uh, how he does the weathering with a sponge basically. And oh yeah, um, basically that's the method I use. Now I do use a lot of, as well, as you know, uh, pan pastels as uh, an additive on top of that. Right. So, so I start with the pan pastels and then I put stuff on top of them. Yeah. So we do it a little bit differently, but uh, you know, it gets to the get same place. We all get there, that's right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so it's just, you know, it's a matter of practicing. Uh, I strongly encourage people if to use photos. Um, photos are great. Uh, I used to print a lot of photos, but Costco decided they didn't want to print photos anymore, so I put them on my iPad. And, uh, you know, photos are, are, are great because your eye will trick you for sure. You'll think something is right, and then you hold it up to a photo, and you go, "That's not even close." So start with the photos. Uh, photos will show a lot of scratches where the doors open and close. So you see, you get a lot of little subtle things, uh, subtle rust spots and 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 chips and all of that. Nice seeing you, Clark. Well, Pete, I can't thank you enough for tonight. This has really been fascinating. I've, I've really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you so much. Sure, I'd like to do the uh, do one for you one time with just using the uh, AK weathering pencils. Because I'd love to do it. I'd yeah, love it's not as it. not as long as this, but uh, but they're good. They're good things. I really be, being a cheap guy. I go, man, I'm going to pay. I don't know what they're paid for. Thirty seven euros? No, more than that. Anyway. Um, maybe you could maybe you could combine that one with the uh, the truck one that you got. Yeah, I could probably do that because I'd really yeah. like to see that. I that, that's something that's always fascinated me. And I I do a lousy job, so I, I'm really interested to see something like that. Well, I bought a uh, a weathering book, uh, weathering <laughs> trains from the uh, people that do the weathering magazine, and I was looking through it today and. They do a great job on the on the cars, but they don't do hardly anything on the trucks. And if you look at the trucks on a train going by, I mean, they're they're, you know, they're yep. definitely weathered. So I was a little bit disappointed with that, but you know, whatever. Well, let me ask another stupid question that I'm famous for. What's the Weathering Magazine? I've never heard of that. Oh, uh, I don't have one handy. The Weathering Magazine is put out by uh, Ammo of Mig. It comes out of Spain. Uh, each issue, um, just you could just Google what, the Weathering Magazine, and it'll okay. come up. 
Um, they do four issues a year and each issue is a different uh, subject like fading, like chipping, like uh, some of them will be like aircraft or some of them, most of them will be military, but all of the techniques that these guys are using are applicable to what we do, every one of them. I never so, heard of it. Well, I didn't even know, I didn't know such a magazine existed. Yeah, the Weathering Magazine, it's great. It's really nice. Is it in English? I mean, I mean, is it a print or digital? There's a print, mag there's a print magazine and there's also a downloadable that you can download it too. Um, and it's in, it's in English? The one I get is, yeah, they do okay. it in Spanish, they I do it in Russian. I, gonna, I just wondered if I could read it. Yeah, <laughs> they do it in Spanish, Russian, Polish, uh, a couple other. Come on, you could speak Russian. <laughs> <laughs> All Especially right. when you're in a hurry. <laughs> I, learned, I learned something.